Well, hello everybody and welcome to another video of micro plugin development series. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to connect to placeholder API in your plugin, how to make relational variables and also how to make placeholders within placeholders. We're going to be going deep in the rabbit hole. So stay with me to the very bitter end of this video and I'm going to give you all the source codes that you need. So first of all, what is the plugin called placeholder API? It is a very basic brief plugin that provides um, something similar as Vault, except that this one does not connect different plugins when it comes to economy, chat, or permissions, but it simply connects plugins when it comes to placeholders. What is a placeholder? Well, if I type in hello and then health, right? In an ideal world, this is a placeholder and it can be replaced into the actual health of the player. Some placeholder look like this, whilst others look like that. I think these two are the most common formats for placeholders. And the placeholder API can be installed as any other plugin, meaning you simply download and place it as a jar on your server. And then when you first, excuse me, when you first start the server and you load it, we have to download some, something called expansion packs. And each expansion packs pack deals with a specific set of variables. So type in slash PAPI eCloud, this is the internet location where they have all the viruses, <coughs> excuse me, expansion packs. And then we're going to be downloading a virus <coughs> expansion pack. And you can see all the selection right here. So I'm just going to keep it very simple. I'm going to go to the official site on Spigot MC where placeholder API is listed. And if you can't find it, just go into Google and type in placeholder API. And then go and open up the placeholders link, which is going to give you a very nice long page on GitHub. And here is a list of all the different placeholders. So for example, if we just want to start off very basic, we can go into P for player. And this one is P E cloud download player, right? So we're going to do that, hit OK. And once this is done, just hit PAP reload to automatically load it. Then if you want to test the placeholder, what you can do you can type in parse and then the name of the player, you want to parse the variables as, and then the actual, uh, placeholder. So for example, we have player health. I think it is right here, player health. If I type it and I hit enter, it says 20. My health equals 20, right? And you can see now it works properly. Now, question is, as a developer, how can you add support for placeholder API so that any other plugin can then utilize these placeholders? Well, I'm going to show this to you. However, before I show this to you, I'm going to show you how you as a developer can connect and start using all these placeholder. So remember, we had a video about game events in this chapter in this YouTube series. If you don't, if you did not see it, please do yourself a favor and see it now because otherwise it's going to require you to understand uh, pretty much this code, the event handler, handler, and then the async chat event and stuff like that. And if you don't understand public final class and these things, it means that you have to learn Java. We actually have a great course just to learn Java specifically with Minecraft plugins. I am on there twice per week to provide personalized help and it's the seven week biggest Minecraft educational program ever created. Uh, the link to it, it's in the description and you can learn more about it if you need to hone your Java and micro plugin coding skills. So having said that, if I go and I listen to async chat event, well, actually I'm not going to be using this particular event because it's pretty new event. And if you code for Minecraft older than 1.19, you may struggle. So I'm just going to be going with the good old async player chat event, right? And here, what we can do, we can simply set the event message to a message that has all placeholders replaced. So we can get the old message by calling event.getMessage. And then we can just go and go to placeholder API that set uh, placeholders. And this bracket means this bracket. And if you call it just normal, I think it's going to replace percentages. So we can just go with percentages if you want to, and then get the player and get the message. And that's it. Now, of course, if you can't open up placeholder API, it means that you haven't imported the plugin yet. If you need to get help on how to import it, if you go to hook into placeholder API on its GitHub page, you're going to see how to import it with Maven. You will need to copy repository right inside your palm file, which is right here. And then inside the repository section somewhere, place it here. And then 
I don't think I even have it. Let me just check it. No, I really don't think I have it. So I don't know where I'm having access to it. Anyways, make sure to place it there and then <clears throat> make sure to place this right here. And then the version is supposed to be replaced with the API version. So I can just replace it right here. We 2.11.3 and then just place it somewhere at the bottom, just like that. And I think you need to just Click this icon in Maven. Now, we're using the palm.xml build system. If you don't have that file, I should have probably mentioned that earlier. If you don't have that file, then refer to the second video in this tutorial series. I'm going to teach you how to create it. That one doesn't look like it's working. So let me just remove the V before. Let me see if it loads without the V in the version. All right, that seems that it's working. And now that one is going to work correctly. Let me reload and let me see what this will do. Great, in the game, if I type in hello, player name, it should say my name. If I type in player health, it should say my health. Now, question number two, how you can add custom placeholders as a developer, create a new class and I can just call it placeholder API hook. And then I can make sure that this expands, uh, this extends an expansion placeholder expansion from this very package. And then we're going to need to implement these three methods. Plus there is, and there is actually a third method called on request, which I'm going to explain later on. So the get identifier, this basically means what I have to put in uh, here. This is the player. So I just want to put in say cow canoon. And then the author, this can be, I don't know, my company name. And then the version of the placeholder, this does not really matter, whatever you want to put there. And then on request for the given player with the given parameters, right? So now watch out because there's two methods. There's the, I think there is the on, re on request method, on request. And there's on, and the other one is called on placeholder request. Now, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the difference between these two is that on placeholder request only works for players that are online. Although be careful because even this can be null. For example, if console is being called and then this one should in theory also work for offline players if it is being called for an offline player by another plugin. So I'm going to go with this one because that one is even more versatile, but I'll just make it work for online players. So player is online and then I can maybe rewrite this to an offline player and then I can call offline player get player in case we are not online. Uh, yeah. And also in case the offline player is not null, of course, because as, as the documentation say, they want, this one can be null. So if we have a player and the player is online, only then I'm going to replace the placeholders. Now, the way it's going to work is the parameters, right here. You can start typing basically if the parameters equals say, I don't know, we have balance, right? Remember if you watched the last video, so we have uh, how, how much the player has in their bank account, then it means we're going to type in player underscore balance. And here I can just go and I can hook into the vault hook and I can get the balance for our offline player. Uh, I'm not going to cover, you know, th this balance. If you want to learn how to create your own economy, please watch the other plugin. However, this is not going to work because this requires a string. So I can go and I can format the currency symbol just like that. Again, I covered this in another video. If this is too complicated, if you can't make sense of it, I can just go here into and I can say I don't know, demo and I can say return hello world and you'll see how that works when I reload the game and jump into it. Now it's not going to work because I completely forgot to register this hook. And for this, I can just make it public static void register. And then I can just go into, yeah, just create a new instance of this class and then call register method. Although it's not going to work because this one, that one is essentially called the same. So I can be, I can do a register hook. And that register method is actually called inside the, um, the parents class. So now if I go into our main on enable on enable class, what I can do, I can just type in if the server plugin manager has a plugin called placeholder API, then we're just going to call placeholder API hook that register hook. That's right. So now in the game, if I type in cow canoon underscore demo, which stands for this placeholder, it's going to simply, whoops, it's going to return hello world. If I type in balance, it should return zero cows. And if I give myself balance again, I covered this system in the last video, then it should return a hundred cows. Right? 
So that's how it works. Now, secondly, there's also a way how to replace uh, relational placeholders. And I think this will need to do, this will need to implement the relational method. And then we need to implement on placeholder request for the first player and then the second player. So this is the params. And this basically means if there's two players connected, you can have a relationship between them. So if you have a factions plugin, for example, if this player types in, um, say, I don't know, relation or cow canoe status, right? This player is going to see uh, neutral because I'm typing to myself, but this player is going to see enemy. If if the Kangerco is an enemy to second account, so you can create these relational placeholders too, which is pretty nice. So again, we have to make sure if the first player is not null and the second player is not null, and then we're going to be checking the status, then yeah, I'll simply, I'll simply compare if first get name equals to second get name. We're just going to return neutral. You can even use colors here. So I'm going to do gray. However, if first get name equals say my name, I'm just going to do it for demo purposes, right? And the second get name equals second account. I'll return chat color red enemy. That's right. And then I'll just return, I don't know, friend chat color green in case there's another player. Let me reload and let me see how that will work. Now, guys, sorry, I screwed up. It's not going to work because we have to call a specific method called set relational placeholders where we place these two players. So the way we're actually going to accomplish this, we need to cancel this event because bucket will not support it otherwise. And we need to set, we need to send a custom message for each rece recipient. So for uh, bucket, no, that event dot get recipients, right? So this is the recipient. Then we need to basically just get a copy of the message and then the message will have normal placeholders. Then it's going to have relational placeholders, uh, having the player one, which is the sending player. The other player is the recipient and the third thing being the message. And then we can simply do, yeah. So we can now delete the other stuff and then we can simply send recipient this very message. Okay, guys, so now if I type in any message, it will not show who sent it. Unfortunately, that's what happens if you just send a message to the player because we have to also send uh, whoever is the sender of the message. And this basically means that you are going to be creating your own chat plugin. Now, yeah, where is the message? Event get format. Let me just do it properly again. So we have the player, then we have Colin, then we have a message that should work. And if you run into issues with, you know, with some plugins, some plugins could be fixed if you just increase the priority, set it to highest, so that the other plugins can do their modifications before you and you come as last. So that's sort of, you know, a quick solution, quick workaround for that. But again, if you use any advanced plugins, I think even my plugin chat control. Red would not really like that. And we do already have a, we, we have full support for both relational and normal placeholders. So you don't even have to code this for my plugin. Anyways, let me reload. Let me see what this will do. Now, if you do want to test relational placeholders, you make sure to prefix the placeholder with R E L and an underscore. So here, instead of just typing cow canon underscore status, make sure to prefix it. And now as we say, as, um, as I explained, if I'm trying to see my own message, right, the player is equal. So this player is going to see neutral and then this other player should, should see something else. And this player should see friend. Yeah. Let me do it again. There we go. So that one, the cover bow says sees friend. And then this one sees enemy because we're the second account. If the first one is myself and the second is second, we're just going to return enemy. Hopefully that makes sense. A very beautiful way to differentiate um, and to make amazing plugins, especially if you're coding like factions plugin or whatever. And now you can simply create a way to send different uh, chat messages for different fractions, comparing their statuses to each other. And the third and the final thing that I wanted to explain, some people wanting to have placeholders within placeholders so that not only you'll, you'll type something like this one, but you'll basically type in status underscore. And here you're going to type another uh, placeholder guys for this one. I don't think I have any magic solution. What do you need to do before you call 
placeholder API, you're just going to call replace method if you want to replace something before, right? I think probably what you could also do is replace it in the params. So params equals params that replace, and then, I don't know, replace this or replace something like this with, uh, say, the first player's name, right? So maybe you could do that as well. And of course, you can do the same in on the request as well. Just make sure that the player exists. Also make sure that these two exist if you use them. And I think that's how you replace placeholders within placeholders. Hopefully this video was helpful. Give it a thumbs up. Comment below if it was helpful. If you learned something new, subscribe to this channel. Check my classes because I'm going to be sitting there twice per week with you to debug all of that issues. It's actually live coaching plus seven weeks of pre-recorded content just for Java and Minecraft plugins. It goes pretty deep. People have made anti-cheats, people made mini games from the class, and we have a full 30-day money back guarantee. If you don't like it, we'll just refund your money back. So just a quick update at the end of this video. Please make sure to place placeholder API inside your soft depend in your plugin.yml because otherwise it might load after your plugin and cause issues plus what you can do to avoid errors in case the customer of yours does not have placeholder api installed you can simply call if bucket get plugin manager get plugin placeholder api is not null and only run this code which connects to placeholder api when the plugin is present now this one may cause some performance drawbacks so you might might as well store this as a field somewhere outside of this method so that it is not being called every single time a player chats and definitely not for every uh, player. PAP present, so maybe I can enhance the performance of it at least a bit by doing something like this. Anyways, guys, that is it for this video and I'll see you in the next one.